The Sony TC40 was released in 1970 as the successor to the TC50. It's a handheld mono dictation recorder. This one works okay, but the belts are old and dragging a bit, so I'm just going to do a quick tear down, clean lube, and replace the belts and put it back together. See if I can figure out how to take it apart. Batteries out. Two screws on the back and there's some screws holding this carry handle on. Two more on the back. And it lifts right off. Easy peasy. You can see the motor in the belt here. I'm going to have to take this PCB off. The speaker lifts out here, and there's more of this nasty black foam that's disintegrated here, so I'm going to try to pull that off as intact as much as possible. Try a little bit of Isopro to loosen the adhesive. Sometimes it'll come off intact. I haven't found any better way to remove this black foam and adhesive residue than just very tediously, a little bit at a time. If anybody knows a better way, let me know down in the comments. That's mostly cleaned up. I have to figure out how to lift this PCB out of the way. And there's another screw hiding under these wires here. Okay, looks like it wasn't necessary to desolder anything after all. Appears to be two belts in here. Transport system similar to the TC120. There's two flywheels, capstan retainer, and another belt that drives the take up reel. I'm going to have to remove the capstan retainer so. Might as well get at these screws here. I'm going to disassemble this a little bit more. I took the front section off so I can get in here and clean this. I ended up disconnecting a few more wires so I could lift this some more out of the way. I'm going to take these old belts off. Belt path here goes over to the capstan wheel and under from the other flywheel. I've got the new belts handy, but I need to clean the pulleys first, remove any belt residue. I'm just going to take this speaker retaining ring out real quick if I can. And lift the capstan out. Lift the other flywheel. Here are the new belts, turntableneedles.com, they send you these alcohol pads, so 
so you can clean the old belt path. If you leave any old belt residue behind, that can actually cause slippage or cause degradation of the new belts. You can see all of the, maybe you can't, I can see if you can see this here. Here in the old capstan flywheel pulley groove, you can see a lot of residue left behind. And we don't want to forget about these two pulleys down here, the motor and the, I think this is the take up reel clutch. You know, a lot of people will probably be afraid to take something like this apart this far, and probably rightly so. I've had a lot of experience with this before. I took my first tape recorder apart when I was, I don't know, maybe 12 or 14 years old. And I think that time I probably didn't get it put back together the right way. These days I gotta use a magnifying glasses to see what I'm doing. But uh, a good set of tools helps for being able to put things in the right place and a, or a good set of tweezers is invaluable. And before I put things back together and put the new belts in, I'm just going to get in here and clean up any gunk that I can see. Maybe throw a few drops of oil in here and there. On the capstan retainer here, these little plastic inserts have fallen out and it looks like they used to be glued in there. These are uh, just some plastic you can see on the uh, on the flywheel here and on the capstan there's a polished metal dome. They just spin sitting on top of these like tops. I'm going to have to glue those plastic pieces back in there. Any drop of Gorilla Glue. Definitely not that much. A little bit of Super Lube Grease. I'm going to take these screws out here that hold in the uh, condenser mic and the meter so that I can take the front panel off. I'm going to take the front panel and front and back half of the plastic shell and wash those. And before I put it all back together, let's just try testing it and see if it plays. I'll have to hook the batteries up just by pressing them here. This 
this meter won't move at all and it's completely sealed. So I don't think there's anything I can do about it. That's all back together. It takes four AA batteries in this special battery holder that snaps in. Transport controls are interesting. You've got forward and stop, and you can see the display here change. When it's stopped, that's a rewind. And when it's in play, it's fast forward. But it doesn't lock in, so in both cases you have to hold it down. Volume controls on the back with the speaker. Connections up front. Pressing Q, fast forwards, and you can still hear it. So you can hold it in one hand, press record and play. I don't know, it's kind of hard to, to operate with one hand. You can certainly hold it and speak into the microphone after you have it started. You're going to need two hands to press record. The check button just pushes up on the tape right here, which when it's in play mode, you can't do. Let's try recording. Rewind, press down record, and move it to play at the same time. Wait for it to go past the leader. Testing, testing, testing. This is a test. One, two, three. A, B, C. Hopefully I got that microphone connected back up correctly. Testing, testing, testing. This is a test. One, two, three. A, B, C. Sounds okay. One other thing that's uh, not uncommon for recorders of the day is that the erase head is a permanent magnet. You don't see it now. If we depress record, it comes down. It's kind of spring loaded there. But in normal play mode, it stays retracted and away from the tape. I did a speed test off camera and it is running quite a bit slow actually. I'll have to check and see if it's possible to adjust that. In the box we have a, uh, a shorting plug which is just used to 
round out the microphone input when you want to erase a tape. It also has this switch which plugs into the remote jack and gives you an on off switch so you can pause basically this is the pause button which just turns the motor off this is not a sony microphone probably a third party with a mic and remote switch old style earphone and a Sony brochure showing some of the other models available. There's a TC-56, TC-44, Vesta 110, 110B, Not sure what year that's from. I didn't notice any date codes in here. I'll have to review the footage and see if I inadvertently captured any date codes. Let me know when that one was made. Looks like this Sony microphone that I got with the uh, TC120 will fit in here, which isn't necessarily a given. Sometimes the spacing on here is different between brands. Here's another microphone, no brand name on it. But you can see that, uh, yeah. That one won't fit. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. For reference, the speed adjustment's right here. Fortunately, it didn't require taking it all apart again. Got the speed pretty close to correct.